uh, my age, I always say, is less than 40 and greater than 30. <laughs> and um, my background is in game simulation and programming. I think my passion kind of came through games. Uh, I remember we got this, there were the few games that kind of came on our computer and these text-based adventure games, and one of them was Zork. And it was very, very simple. It was just, you know, you enter, you enter into this little text terminal and you type in a command. And that kind of kind of interested, like, some of my passions for it's like, oh, could I make one of these myself? And then the first thing I ever did was make this little cube bounce around on the screen. Really simple, but I remember showing my dad, and I was so excited, and I was so proud. And from there, it's like, what else can I do? What else can I do? And then you realize that games involves a lot of math, and I never thought I liked math. And... I don't know, that's what makes it fun. Like Math is like a puzzle. All the answers are right in front of you, you just have to find it. What kind of relationship occurred between my game and my life? Um, I guess my life is games. Like When you like something that you do, not that it's not frustrating sometimes, but that's one of the best things about like creating some type of world. And that kind of also got me into like things like 3D printing and it's, it's like you create this amazing world, but it's not something that you can hold or touch or is tangible. And that's one of the great things about like taking something that you like from games. And, you know, if you work on a costume or a cosplay project, you're making that because you love that character. And you're also using some type of technology. And they're usually from games. <laughs> oh, my favorite Marvel superhero, Captain America. And I know that sounds really cliche at the time but he he was my brothers and I we used to have this game and we always fight over who could play which character and yeah that was mine actually when I had my interview at Marvel they asked me that and I was like I know this sounds cheesy but also he was one of the few few characters that they actually they they killed off which I think they will do that in the movies but um yeah it just showed a little more of this human side and you could be you didn't have to be like have a superpowers to be super yeah something about my tattoos uh i have a lot of them i don't know i got them in prison no i, I didn't i didn't get them in prison i'm just kidding no that's not true does it um i let's see i have a mom and a dad tattoo um my mom passed away she had breast cancer when i was 15 and um so i do have something that's kind of to remind her of I also have, um, we have the tradition actually, so yesterday at Code Motion was Friday the 13th. So you usually have a tradition that we get tattooed on Friday the 13th. And um, so I have quite a few little like, little Friday the 13th tattoos everywhere. So you get tattooed, they're $13 and then you tip $7 for good luck. So I have quite a few. Yeah, I'm running out of real estate. <laughs> I feel like not much. So when I went to school, none of my programming classes, I was the only girl. So I did, in the very beginning, there was one girl, but she ended up withdrawing. And it's, it's not that they can't handle the work, but the atmosphere is very different. So if anybody has any brothers, so I have little brothers, I have twin brothers, and um, it's like just having to be around them constantly all the time. And... Um, their jokes or I, I felt I would specifically do things like when I would go to school I I wouldn't wear makeup or do something because I didn't want them to think that I was like you know any less or any better it's a very strange world and um, it's still kind of like that it, it really is like you say it's not and I have some people that you know, as you get older and I work with people and, they, you know, now they're starting to get married and, um, you know, they have a lot of, you know, their wives are feminist or their wives work or their wives are in tech. And um, it's different. I think it is a little more accepted, but I still have people all the time. They're like, oh, you work in games. Do you do art? And I'm like, no, no, I do the programming. And they're like, oh, I didn't think girls did that. I'm like, why does that matter? So, um that's one of the like biggest things as far as like outreach that if you're going to go into games, it's almost like you need to go through like a life class too of kind of how it is and how it's going to be. Cause can you imagine like, say you only have sisters and you're going to be a programmer and you go and work in this male predominant field and 
you're in for a, a nice rude awakening. Okay, so there, um, there's still a big separation between the idea of uh, beauty and brains and tech. So, um, for example, uh, there's some celebrities there, like Kim Kardashian. I do not think of her as a role model, right? But for some reason, if she were to take a picture and she has half her clothes off, people think she's a role model and it's totally acceptable. But if I were to 3D print an entire bikini and do electronics and add any um, motors or anything, then I am the one that is over-sexualizing this industry. And the idea of like having beauty and brains, but it's, it's not even that, it's what you like. And why should you, someone make you feel bad for liking something that you do? And, and women in code specifically are targeting more of like the, the younger girls and um, you know, trying to get them into coding and computer science and any of the science, technology, engineering, mathematic field, which is amazing. But I just wanna make sure that they're, you know, they're not just pushing code, they're pushing something that whatever these girls are really obsessed with doing, that they can still do that. Like don't kill their creativity from that. And um, I think it's actually from Pinterest, which is like a fashion application. And, and I believe it's founded by a girl that was a programmer and she liked fashion and she knew how to code. And that was just a very strange thing to have, like to have both. But I'm like, why? You know, she likes both and, and that's okay. I just want to make sure like, it, some of the girls too, they, I did one for um, code.org and there was this little girl, she was in fifth grade, so about seven or eight, and she said she didn't think that programming was cool. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't think programming is cool? And at some point someone you know, killed her creativity or she saw something on, on TV that just stuck in her mind of what she thought a programmer does or d d like everyday job or what they look like and yeah. That's when you take away all the electronic, electronics, turn off the lights, and then you say, every single thing that you do here is run by some type of computer that is computer science. So, it's pretty cool. No, I, th I mean, there was discussion that went around about that. Um, and I think part of it kind of is true. And I have a friend that works for um, NASA, and NASA is a, a government um, employee. And you would think that... As a government employee, if you had to go on something like maternity leave, that you would get a lot of vacation time working for the government. You wanna know how much they get? They get zero, so none. So as a woman, if you were going to have a baby, you, kind, you have to plan this stuff. And that used to be because primarily uh, the, the women would stay at home and the men worked. That's not that there is anything wrong with that, but that's just kind of the older fashion of how it used to be. Um, does that mean that that puts a woman at a disadvantage for that job specifically? I mean, no. And then, but I think also a lot of, so me personally, I also feel I don't want to, if I, you know, I don't want to have kids because I feel I'm left behind in my job or I'm not going to be picked up on my project or they're not going to treat you the same. I think those are probably normal for anyone that, that works and, um, yeah, there, there's some things about it that it's probably true what, you know, they pay someone less, but uh, who determines that? That could be based on your skill set, or maybe they actually hired them because of diversity, and they maybe they paid them a little less, but they're giving them a chance. I, I mean, there wasn't, the details on that were very, I don't know, a lot of touchy subjects on that. Yeah, so we've been working on a, um, a project with a robotic augmented reality game. So we have a, actually a camera is on the interface of this toys to life game and you drive around uh, the robot. So everything that you see on your phone or your console, your Xbox, your Windows computer, the, all the gameplay is augmented and, <laughs> and it's uh, laid over. I saw that. <laughs> Yeah, so all the, all the gameplay is digital, so you're in a mixed reality. So you can actually play, the, you could be sitting here and you can drive the robot around this entire building. Um, we're not built on like Bluetooth or anything that's limiting like that. And um, yeah, we have some great uh, manufacturers that are very, very advanced and 
um, they're doing a good job. It's actually very exciting because we went, when we demoed a few years ago, when like AR was a very, very new term and people didn't quite get it. And let, you know, it was about the time that Pokemon Go came out and people were like, oh, this is AR or Snapchat. And I'm like, yeah, when you put a funny face on you, that, that's AR too. Um, so originally I started doing some stuff where with my own tattoos and I would mark them and then I would use them on the screen and I would throw up some type of AR tattoos. So I was like, oh, let's make, a, let's make temporary tattoos and then pass them out and show. So just from showing people, that helped understand and explain without having to explain to you, do you know what Pokemon is? Yes, no. Do you know what this is? No, yes. So it spoke a thousand words and it was kind of a neat little thing because it's like, oh, hey, it works and you're helping like revolutionize some little new industry. But yeah, not without the, its frustrations, but it's, um, yeah, it's a great future of AI. I guess uh, AI and machine learning are both very, very um, separate, but they're coming together in a way that um, could be very interesting. So Unity has their 2018 beta out right now, and they have a lot of stuff built in with, uh, with Anaconda and TensorFlow, things that are using machine learning from either a GPU or a CPU. And it's, uh, it's very impressive, like the tools that are out there to give to developers right now. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get up and running and you don't have to be, you know, applied physics. You don't have to be a crazy math, like mathematician to, you know, solve some of these problems. And things like Unity, that's the nice thing about their engine. It's, do you know how much you weigh on Earth? What the, what the gravity is on Earth for a human? But you don't have to know that now. Like Unity's engine has that stuff calculated in there that you don't have to calculate. This is how much, uh, you know, a person weighs on Earth with Earth's gravity. And if you're on another planet, you have different gravity. You don't have to do that stuff anymore. And it's pretty amazing. And it's also some people think it's scary. But, I mean, we already use it every, like we use AI stuff every day. You just don't think about it. If you have a thing that says, hey, you need to leave in 20 minutes, traffic is heavy. That's some type of, you know, AI or automation saying, hey, I mean, there's, so I have things too, like the, a lot of the biohackers, and I mentioned I have a RFID implant, and that, I think that scares people because they don't understand, right? They're like, oh, the government can, um, can track you, and I'm like, it's not Wi-Fi, and so if anything, I guess my, my goal and hope is just to be able to educate on what it is, so if people are afraid of AI, it's usually because they don't quite understand it. And I guess fear is a very, very strong motivator, so.